Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Before I introduce my guest today, Angela Harris, I'd like to just share with you that today this show is airing on my birthday. Yes, it is. And I'm also going to give a shout out to Sandra Funk because it's her birthday too. Hey, Sandra, happy birthday. (laughs) Um, And I was wondering if you are a regular listener and you tune in each week because you're learning something, you're coming away with takeaways that help you grow your interior design business and help it be more profitable. If that sounds like you, would you mind giving me a little birthday love today and going over to iTunes and rate and review the show? I'd really appreciate it. So I try and do my best. I really do. And I try and do a lot of research and do everything I can to get to the heart of every matter for you guys. And for me too, believe me, I'm learning along the way. It doesn't matter how many years you are in business, there's always something to learn. And it's been a great ride so far and I'm enjoying it. I hope that you are as well. And if for my birthday today, you'd be inclined to put a rate and review in iTunes, I truly, truly would appreciate it. All righty, let's get to today's guest. Angela Harris is the principal of Trio Environments. This woman is literally, you know, sometimes we use the word dynamo a little too easily. Because then when I want to use the word for somebody that really particularly it fits, it seems like it doesn't carry enough weight. But Angela Harris is a dynamo. Trio Environments is one of the fastest growing interior design and visual merchandising firms in the nation. The company is tracking to be an international leader in creative market driven design in less than 10 years. um, Angela earned a BS in marketing and management from the University of Colorado, and then she went to work at an engineering firm, and she wasn't feeling like it. She wasn't loving it. She just felt like she wasn't living up to her potential. So she dropped everything to pursue her dream career in interior design. She enrolled in a professional interior design program, and she spent her last $500 on business cards, direct mail, and other startup costs to launch Trio Environments. Today, the company has over 20 employees and manages more than 76 projects at any given time, both local and national. Trio Environments has helped to sell more than 21,000 homes and has generated over $7 billion in revenue for commercial and residential clients. Angela has a master's degree in sustainable design from the Philadelphia University, and she sits on the Denver Home Builders Association Board of Directors. She manages seven councils through the HBA and she sits on the Sales and Marketing Council for the National Association of Home Builders. You heard me say Dynamo, right? Like now it's all falling into place. (laughs) To give the company a competitive edge, Angela developed a three-part process that assesses a client's current baseline value through their design program, introduces target market design principles, and finally executes a design that's innovative, attractive, and profitable. She fuses this market-driven approach with a passion for creating beautiful spaces. Angela believed Trio could deliver better design at a lower cost in a shorter time frame with better merchandise, and time has proven her right. You'll hear in the discussion today how important it is to be well-prepared and to have your systems in place. And I'd like to remind you that our show sponsor, My Doma Studio, can help you do exactly that for your interior design firm. From client management to vendor communication, my Doma Studio can help you get on track and help keep you there. For your special offer as a podcast listener, go to www.mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business. Alrighty, I am really chomping at the bit to, inv- to uh, introduce you to Angela. Hey, Angela, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. 
I am very excited too, Angela, because you have, I say this a lot actually, but you people just keep uh, really impressing me one after another, you designer rock stars out there and you are another <laughs> one. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you to say, thank you. It's, but you know, what's funny is that I feel like I say that all the time too, but I truly <laughs> am getting impressed every single week over and over again. And um, you are impressing me on a lot of levels. And so a lot of times uh, an interior designer impresses me in a particular super superpower and I had a hard time figuring out what your superpower was <laughs> oh so, yeah because uh in my research of you I learned these things that I will share with our audience right now and these are all the different things that I felt like we could have taken and uh talked about so your firm Angela you have like 15 or 16 members on your firm you have one two three I don't know four three or four project leads you have you know five or six design assistants um, mm -hmm. of course you have all the requisite VP of operations and v director of sales and the director of finance and all of those things but mm -hmm. it's a big firm and um, that was interesting and impressive to me and then I go to your website and the videos the trio TV is adorable <laughs> I'm just like seriously why did NBC call these ladies yet and just the heck with the doing design let's just put them on a TV show we have a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really, really something else. And of course, we talk about doing video for our business and the value of it for our businesses here all the time on the podcast. But that is a whole nother level. That reminded me of the Pulp Studio level of uh, videos and stuff like that. So that was fun for me. And I thought, wow, we could talk about that. Um, and then I knew that you come from a marketing background. And I thought, well, we could talk about that. And mm -hmm. then I started figuring out how a lot of your business is built on the relationships that you have built with builders and developers. And I mm -hmm. thought, let's go there. <laughs> mm, I could so, talk about that all day. That's it. So, um, so here's the thing. What I know from my research also is that with your big team there that you have one project team, one team that handles residential, high-end luxury residential, and the rest of your teams handle commercial and handle this builder-developer market where you focus on model homes, apartment houses, clubhouses, restaurants, amenity areas for you know different lifestyle communities and so forth. And so mm -hmm. we'll kind of talk about that mostly today. So okay. You built your company with these relationships. Would you describe what we're actually talking about for your colleagues listening, the types of relationships and the types of builders and um, contacts that you, that you were building this on? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. I, um, well, you know, we are, our firm is about 17 years old and we have 16, 17 in the firm. I started out as an independent um, contractor, so a residential designer. Um, I quickly was building great relationship with real estate agents, and then real estate agents started introducing me to builders, and builders started introducing me to developers. And, and once I got to a level that I was really working with builders and developers on a more market-driven design process, I, I just fell in love. I mean, I, it was the perfect opportunity for me to fuse together my background in marketing and interior design and how to, you know, really resonate with a certain target market and uh, fuse together the interior design with the branding was just was just a dream come true. So and, uh, well, and what, well, what you mean by that, in other words, is that you when you work with a builder or a developer, you're what you're describing. So for instance, let's let's take a for instance and see if I'm understanding it correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a relationship with a developer and the developer says, OK, Angela and the rest of my team, extended team, whoever he else pulls into the table. He says, I have a vision for, say, a 55 plus community. It's going to be a high rise and blah, blah, blah. And what you're describing is that between your marketing background combined with your design background, Background, that you are weighing in on the the way this place, this entire project should be designed, the way the doors look, the way the kitchens look, the way the lobby looks, and the feeling and the branding and the marketing so that when he says, I want to attract affluent 55 plus people, you are bringing that aesthetic so that it realizes his target market. Is that what you're describing? Absolutely. So. It. It's been a, we've been able to expand our brand to really handle the entire creative process. So mm. 
will get pulled in from the very beginning of the project. I mean, even to the point where they're just looking at the land and they haven't closed on the land and they don't know exactly what this is going to become. You know, we're doing design charrettes in terms of what is the community? Who is our target market? What kind of lifestyle are we going to and what kind of experience are we going to see from this particular buyer? And literally the creative process starts there. And we have our hands um, in it from the very beginning all the way through to um, weighing in and overseeing the the house plans and the architecture and the elevations and then the interior design and all the way down to actual product design within the home. So it's really a special opportunity for us because it allows us to be part of something bigger and be a part of a team that comes together and collaborates and communicates and is constantly pushing the creative boundaries to deliver something that's just spectacular. It's really, it is remarkable what you're describing. So it's not just a matter of, oh, trio environments, the, this building is built. What do you think the lobby, you know, sofa should be? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, no, You're no, no. really conceptualizing the user experience is really what we're tr- trying to describe. What is the user experience and what is this experience that's going to draw the particular user that you're targeting for that, that whole development into it, Right. You absolutely nailed it. It's all about the experience of our audience. And and for us, that just it we're so lucky because we do get to have so much creative control um, in working with the architecture firms and working with in terms of the interiors. It's not just about, oh, it's this sofa or this piece of art. It is literally about a corn shell environment. And we are specifying every surface, every plumbing fixture, every lighting, every every tiny little detail within that environment to create an experience that is consistent with what we have designed on the exterior and then at the final kind of layer is the merchandising portion of that and we're we're actually designing our own products right now the um, tria atelier products that we're putting into these these uh environments so it's really exciting time right now that's it, it's remarkable so the thing is you know look i understand that you have a background in marketing um but it's what you're doing is requires a level of expertise in marketing that is more than passing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, mm-hmm. h- half the world has a, ba- a, a, a degree in something they don't work at, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, and it gives you, it informs you and it teaches you and it, and, and it gives you an experience base in something. But unless you continue to cultivate that skill and stay within it. So my question is, I understood, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I thought I read in my research, and I also think it your sounds like you're saying, is that part of what you do is literally hard data driven research to see what that demographic is now wanting. You're not just sitting there going, well, my mom's 55 and she'd probably like the kitchen to be like this. I mean, you're actually doing down and dirty data driven information, correct? Absolutely. We actually do a ton of work on the upfront side of our projects in terms of market research and market data and um, really dialing in what the demographics are looking for. We get very entrenched in consumer trends and what con- um, consumers are driving. Um, so, yeah, we do a lot of front end data See, work. And that surprises me because I would have thought that that could be, and maybe you'll say to me in some relationships that it does, but I would not have thought that that was the responsibility of the design firm. I would have thought that, you know, okay, you have a relationship with the developer. He's got you at the table. He's got the market marketing research, you know, people at the table, and he actually has hired a marketing firm to do this. And then the marketing firm is conveying to you the information they have gathered. And then you say, okay, all of that, you know, boil that down into this sort of design thing. So Mm -hmm. is it unusual, Angela, that you are actually handling both aspects of this? Or am I mistaken in a lot of firms that are successful in this developer area are are are, uh, expected to be responsible for it? No, I think, you know, I think it's both. I think that it's one of the reasons why we have been so successful and that we we do outweigh some of our competition is because 
we do get so entrenched on mm -hmm. every level of the project. We are able to approach these projects in a much more holistic manner mm -hmm. than a lot of other design firms. And it takes a lot of different players um, and a different expertise, but we have all of those people within the firm internally that we can um, leverage on. And, you know, we've done it both ways. So we have some builders and developers that still really kind of like the compartmentalized um, components of mm -hmm. the disciplines. And we absolutely embrace that. But part of that is still staying very highly involved from the project from the beginning. So whether it's an outside marketing and branding firm or whether it's an internal, I think the point is, is that we approach these projects in a much more holistic mm -hmm. manner, which ultimately delivers a better, more competitive uh, product to the marketplace. Right. Because I, I think a lot of times, mistakenly, we think, oh, it's a commercial environment. We can sort of, you know, put our own take on it, our own spin on it, whether that's the own take of the developer, or the builder or the designer, just create something beautiful and they will come. But this level of research and evaluating exactly who that builder, that developer is creating that entity for, whether it be a restaurant or a, you know, community or a high rise, they have a certain demographic in mind, typically. No Mm -hmm. Most people don't just build a restaurant and think, well, whoever shows up will be just good with us. Right, right. <laughs> it's like, do you want, you know, mom and dad and well, 16 kids, right? <laughs> right. Or do you want like the the yuppie couple or the, are, is there even a such thing as yuppie couples anymore? Is that over, right? <laughs> I think you have to say millennial couple, couple now, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it just dated myself there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm on the same page. Don't worry. <laughs> I heard it and I went, that sounds so stupid. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. Everything comes full circle so I'm sure the yuppie will come back oh man so okay I am so duly impressed by what you do it's amazing so okay so now so here we are so this is what you're doing as a team and you have a tremendous team on your hands I mean to just see the roster on your website and to see the photographs the headshots and the descriptions of each it's of them impressive, it right? is it truly is and then to watch the videos of like I said the trio tv and to watch them all speak and, and say, and I love the outtakes, honest to God. <laughs> I know they're fun, right? <laughs> they are. They are adorable. They're so, yeah. they're really special. Um, but the thing is, get me from somebody listening. Now I understand, and I hope anybody listening understands, you're not going from a solo to this, to what Angela has created, you know, in one year or two years, but oh, right. You could, you could aspire to it. Um, but we also have a good segment of designers listening, Angela, that are in business 10, 12, 13 years, and they have a staff of maybe five or six, and they're really poised to mm -hmm. make that jump, to create a big team and to, and, and I have to say, I think that as much as, you are putting a lot of effort and mental thought and research and energy into designing a space for a particular target. In other words, if you don't hit that target, then that builder and that developer do not sell out and therefore you don't get called again. So I'm not in underestimating how hard that right. is to do, mm -hmm. but you're not dealing with Mrs. Smith who's like, and really the 16th sofa you showed her, she doesn't love, right? No. <laughs> or she loves blue one day and within 12 hours, it's, she hates it. <laughs> well, is that blue? I didn't mean that blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes, Mrs. Smith, this is blue. Yeah. Okay. A little bit different process in my world. <laughs> exactly. So, so if there are colleagues out there that are maybe, and of course, you know, the newbies out there that want to be Angela someday, yeah, hang on and listen, but let's talk a little bit to the designers that are 10, 12, 15 years that are really have the ability if they were so motivated and pop, maybe they're a little burnt out on the residential and the blue sofas with the Mrs. Smiths. How do you go about, could you take us back to literally developing and making these relationships? What would your suggestions be? Um, you know, I think you really have to be very conscious and aware to fuse together the creative side with the business side, if that's the direction that you want to go. And what I mean by that is if you're looking to move a little bit away from residential and more into the business side of the industry, i.e. the builder developer world, you need to start getting yourself enthralled in associations and um, on boards and really be able to speak 
to this clientele in a much different manner than you speak to your residential clients. And, and I guess, you know, what that means for me is, you know, it's a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of people around the table. You don't want to be the weak link. And it takes a lot of um, stamina because these projects last two and three years. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a ton of expertise, so you can't do it alone. Um, and um, it's just a different world. You know, it's just a different world in, in, in how you approach and use your talents um, within the design field, because okay. everything we everything we do is still uh, through the design process. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, we're dealing with a different capacity of project. Okay, and so what I'm hearing is the first thing is forget looking for the business. First, take a look at your own business first and see if you're prepared and ready. So because you, what you're saying is, is that once it's almost like going to the big leagues. So, and not that luxury design or residential design isn't profitable in the big leagues, but what you're saying is it's, it's almost like a different language and there's no, it sounds like to me, you're trying to express, there's no loosey goosey. There's, you're coming to the table with your facts, your figures, your, your, your profit and loss reports, your your projections and all of that other stuff. And it's not like, well, I'll find out next week. It's like, no, lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. these builders and developers have a ton at risk. I mean, we're talking about a you know, large amount of capital that go into these projects and there's a ton of risks. Mm-hmm. So you have to come to the table, you know, being confident, understanding what you um, have to to add to the team. And luckily for us, it was always a passion. I, the design portion, you know, I was always passionate about, but I could also balance that with uh, the business side of things. And I think that that was really important. And I think it really resonated with our builders and developers. Mm-hmm. They understood that you were a business person first who happened to have this extraordinary talent as a designer. Yeah. And then a lot of times we had to prove ourselves like the first couple of projects, you know, they, clearly they understood that we were professional and we understood the business side of things. But could we design? Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm, uh, you know, mm-hmm. are we as creative as the most creative designer that doesn't understand the business side right. of things? And we had to prove ourselves. And but we did over the years, time and time again, we keep delivering projects that are just you know, over the top successful, whatever that means, but uh, we get calls back. So that's a good thing. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, I would think that the measure of the success is that the the, the developments sell out. Like when yep. you, when they task you with hitting this demographic market and in, you know, mm-hmm. six weeks or six months, that building is sold out or that, that tract of homes is sold out, sold out, then, then you, you're successful. <laughs> that's exactly so, right. That's awesome. Okay. So now, so, so back to getting started. So we're not talking about meeting your local realtor, your residential realtor. We're talking about going to the, the places that the commercial realtors hang out and the commercial builders hang out. And you mentioned association. So is that what you mean? Like start attending these monthly networking and these business enrichment events that these organizations are hold, holding and start to be in, you know, a, a fly on the wall first, get your seat legs and then start to be involved in them? Is that what you were describing there? Yeah. I mean, I think that's uh, certainly that's the level that we're at now. But when we were first starting out, I mean, it definitely was residential realtors. And, you know, they and then they they introduced us. I mean, just starting small. If you're talking about starting grassroots, you know, starting out with the residential uh, realtors that can introduce you to custom builders. Right. And start doing some custom spec homes. And then those, you know, may lead you to some more recognition for the national builders. And then, you know, you get into a, a the world of the developer world. But for us now, you know, we're really at all of the associations. We have um, seats around the the board of directors of a lot of the associations. We're speaking at the International Builder Show. We're speaking at PCBC. So that's the other thing I think that if, you know, if you're comfortable with it, if the designers are comfortable with it, people love to listen to, to people that know what they're, you know, Talking about. doing or, or, or love, you know, love yeah. what they do and, and are very passionate about what they, what they do and, and it shows. And so if you can get in front of some of those large audiences, um, that always helps. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so again, like where a residential designer makes it her, his or her business to hit high point market and Las Vegas market and, and, and Atlanta America's markets, different things like that. You, that. It's not that those are not without value because you always, you know, have 
resources and, and things that you yep. find. But you're saying there's a whole nother industry that if you want to cross over, you got to cross to that industry and the things that are happening in that as well. Absolutely. I mean, on the designer side, obviously there's ASID and there's IIDA, but on the builder developer side, your local home builders association is an amazing outlet. Okay. Okay. And the local home builders association, when you say that, I, I, I recognize that you don't have, you know, intimate knowledge of every single state in the United States here. Um, mm -hmm. But is it typically the local chapter? Is it, is it a state chapter or are there county chapters or you don't know? Am I no, there, there's, no, there's usually a state chapter, but there's also, um, like we belong to the Denver Metro Home Builders Association okay. and we were very engaged in that, but there's also the state. So there's the state, the city, and then there's the national. So you could look at um, getting involved in the National Home Builders Association, which is just an, a phenomenal resource for education and networking. Okay. Okay. So that's very helpful to know. Okay. So yep. I like that. All right. Now it occurs to me that you you're at this point because you alluded to it and I had already wrote the note a few minutes before you even said it is that you know you're getting invited back to the table to do these projects because you showed yourself in the beginning and mm -hmm. tell us talk 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 to us a little bit about somebody's listening and they're thinking you know this sounds great I could really really take you know four of these kinds of projects and one of the Mrs. Smith projects I'm going to mm -hmm. like look up my builders association I'm going to make connections with my realtors and so forth but take us to doing that first project what were some are there if you can can you recall not necessarily yes. the exact first but the aha moments that somebody you'd say okay I, this caught me by surprise. Let me let you know that this is sort of the thing that you can, you know, you need to look out for. Anything? Um, look out for when I took on a, the first project? Yeah, like the, like in other words, somebody who hasn't done this. But And I'm again, I'm, I'm, my oh. criteria is a 10-year or so firm, knows their stuff, has five or six people, four or five people on staff, and just thinks, you know, this is, this is interesting to me. I'd like to cross over to this builder development. So somebody knows how to execute a project, but what's different from executing your projects, this type of project, that they might not know or realize until they're knee-deep into it. It's like, whoa, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say absolutely positively do not underestimate the expertise that it takes to sit around that table. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. They're because not, you're you not... don't want to embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so what do you think that is? Is that something where, how do you, how would you suggest pretend it's you and me in a room and I'm a designer with 10 years experience and I say, well, I'm just going to go for it. What, how do I get the experience to sit at that table? Do I do little, like you said, maybe I'm going to answer my own question, probably littler projects, local builder, mm -hmm. custom home. Okay. I hear you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Still... don't expect to go to the big boys table right away do something in your town your local community work with a regular you know like I, I know what you mean now so there's builders that are big builders in your area but little builders as compared to national is what you're saying a, a guy right. who owns a street and he's going to put up 12 houses try and get in his little wheelhouse of resources right right well and the thing is is they're all fantastic projects they're right. all wonderful projects um so I wouldn't Right. I wouldn't devalue the, no, the no, no, project. No. Right. But it's it, the stakes are less high. You're working one on one probably with the builder, the developer. It's not this big machine. He's putting up 10 houses and you can work with him and get your sea legs is what you're saying. Right. And I think that the time frame's shorter, you know, so, you know, the time it takes to put together a custom house versus a 400 unit apartment complex um, is quite different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you don't get burnt out. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like to me, you tell me if there's anything to add. It sounds like to me that it is just a matter of making a decision, targeting who and where you're going to spend your time in order to network, and then just kind of trial and error, provided you already are, have skills and expertise as a designer. Yeah, and I think that I would be really, if you're really interested in entering into this world, I would also be very strategic on how you want to grow your firm. And to me, it has everything to do with who you surround yourself with. So, you know, I'm very blessed because I have, you know, I work with amazing people every single day and we all have different kind of expertise and we bring them to the table and we are constantly collaborating and um, I'm for, so fortunate to have that. And I think that 
to get to a level where you're doing these large apartment complexes and commercial work and things like that, I, it's kind of silly to think that you can do it on your own. Mm -hmm. So you really need to focus in on who's your tribe and make sure that you have a ton of synergy with them. Okay. And that's a great segue because I was sort of summarizing and looping up that whole thing. And I wanted to go into creating this team that you have. So that's a perfect segue into it, Angela. So tell me about uh, creating this team because I know from experience as well, it's hard to find the right people, have the ability at the right time to pay the amount that you need to pay in order to get somebody of quality um, mm-hmm. and to vet them to make sure they are who you think they are and what they're worth. How, what are, how did you go about it? What, how did, and, and did you start with, okay, this is my end goal I need and I want to be able to working on these projects, so I need certain types of skill set brought in. I don't have mm-hmm. this skill set. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I think it's one of the biggest challenges of business is creating a team that has a ton of synergy, that works really well together, that are placed in the right place. I mean, it's truly an art form in itself. I, you have to be super creative on that side as well. Right. <laughs> um, but I can tell you now, I mean, we're at to the we're to the point now in our firm 17 years later that I wouldn't want to be doing what I'm doing without the people that I work with. I just I, I adore everybody that is on the team. I, I respect and and um, admire the qualities they bring to the table. And I think one, you know, great thing about our firm and one of the reasons why we have been so successful is that we really try to capitalize on everybody's strengths and we don't pay attention to the weaknesses and we, and we look to what are people passionate about? What do they want to be doing? In what capacity? What does their day look like? And we've shifted people around um, not only job roles, but also who they work with on a daily basis just to make that whole uh, machine work. And it is an art form. And, um, but, but like I said, you, I've gotten to the point now where I, I love going to work and it's all because of the people that we work with. Mm, I think, you know, one of the other things I'll just quickly say is we have a philosophy in our office that, you know, it's always people process profit, um, in that order where, you know, I'm not always concentrating on our profit. I'm, I'm, first and foremost, looking at our people and are our people happy and are we doing the right things as a company to provide them with a safe, secure, fun, creative environment. And as a result, you know, that leads to them buying into processes and, and more efficient processes lead to profit. So it's, you know, I think you just really have to concentrate on your people. It's nice. It's very nice. I like it. Yep. So tell me a little bit about how the team functions. So I noticed that we have uh, Kelsey and Kristen and Olivia are, no, Kelsey and Kristen and Jessica and Holly and Christy are, no, okay, I'm going to start again. <laughs> Holly, <laughs> Jessica and Kelsey are project leads, right? Is that correct? <laughs> Um, Holly, Jessica, and Kelsey are project leads. That's okay. correct. Okay. So you have three project leads and then you uh-huh. have five or six design assistants, it looks like. So do the project leads, are they each tasked with possibly a, div- a different development project, each of them? So you could theoretically, just for argument's sake, have three 400 unit apartment buildings going up at the same time. And each one of these women is handling the, the lead on that. Yeah. So wow. we... We try. I know it's incredible. <laughs> so, first and foremost, we have a VP of operations, Elizabeth Hester, who's mm-hmm. incredible at scheduling um, our projects out. And we also have a VP of creative, which is Christy Zambrennan. And uh, between Christy, Elizabeth, and myself, um, we really kind of um, kind of spearhead how the work gets uh, fluctuated. And so we try to make sure that the teams are dedicated to um, a single project only so that they can get vested in it and get excited about it and right. have ownership over it. Now that can't always happen. I mean, we, there's a lot of times where we shift projects and we shift team members to meet deadlines and things like that, but that's also the fun and exciting thing of our firm, right? It's mm. fast paced. You get to, you're not, every day is not the same <laughs> and um, it's exciting. So okay, diving so- into different projects at different times is Everybody's pretty flexible and can pivot. Okay, so Holly might be running with a project, but all of a sudden Kelsey has got deadlines and you might turn around and you or Christy or Elizabeth say, okay, you know, Holly, we're grabbing you and a couple of your people and you're going to come and help us meet this deadline for the next three days and then go back to your project. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you know what the beautiful thing about the, our firm is that we all do want to help and support each other. So mm-hmm. we just kind of dive in, make sure that we, you know, hit the mark and then mm-hmm. move on. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you have the various design assistants and then you have the director of sales and marketing. So Carrie is the director of sales and marketing. What is she? She's like the, the pavement pounder with you. She goes out and, and rain makes. How does that work? What is that? She, she, she is the rainmaker. She's a true rainmaker. And if you have an opportunity to meet Carrie, um, you will see that she is incredible. She, she, she knows everybody. She, she, there is nobody better at building a, a relationship. And as a result, everybody loves her and wants to give her business. So <laughs> she is our rainmaker. And yes, she's director of sales and marketing. And what's her experience and her background that makes her so terrific at that job? Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. Um, Carrie and I met probably eight years ago on a project and um, she was working for an art, an artist and doing kind of art consulting. And I was working on an apartment complex. And so we came together and started to collaborate on all these custom art pieces. And um, she's just, she, I mean, we, we had a great time and the, the project turned out fantastic. And then fast forward a couple of years later, I ran into her at a professional women in building luncheon <sighs> and we happened to go to lunch and said, why, why aren't we working together? We should be working together. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. All right. Yeah. And then you have Noella who is the project manager. So, uh, what does she's that our mean? Purchase, she's Purchasing. our purchase. Yeah. Okay. So, so does she have, do the purchasing for all of the projects? She does. She's Whoa. very busy. So we have our own procurement do and customer service team. you have about 10 elves team. that help her? I know. <laughs> well, we have a couple people, but she does the majority of the heavy lifting for okay. sure. So um, that's another competitive advantage of our firm. We have our own procurement and customer service team. So what that allows us to do is, you know, the designers don't have to order their own product, which in a lot of firms they, they're having to do. And that's very, very time consuming. And in my mind, I set the firm up because the designers should be designing. That's what they're good at. That's what they're passionate about. They should not be ordering uh, stuff. And Noella loves procurement and she's very, very good at it. And she loves to order things. So we have her uh, set up to do that. And she has um, a couple people to help her track inventory and things like that. Now, that says to me that there is an extreme onus put on the designers to be very accurate in their in the information that they relay to Noella. I mean, otherwise you're standing there with a he said, she said, you know, thing every 20 minutes. You told me to order 20 of those desks. No, I said 200 of those desks, right? Or whatever Mm -hmm. it might be. So you must have insanely strict processes in place and systems in order for these projects to run smoothly. I mean, I'm sure there are things that fall through the cracks and things that happen, but you can't afford for it to be a normal thing. It has to be an abnormal thing. Nope, you are absolutely correct. We have very, um, we have very solid processes in place, and uh, you know, part of one of our core values is consistency. So we're consistent in those processes. It allows us to be very efficient um, and concentrate on being as creative as we can be. I like it. And did you come by those processes, Angela, by trial and error, or did you 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 um, take them from another experience and another firm, or how did you develop your processes? Um, a little bit of both. I think um, certainly we talk to a lot of industry uh, professionals. We have mentors ourselves. So um, that always provides a good foundation. And then once you start to implement on process processes, it's al- always a kind of trial and error and you need to remain flexible so you can course correct as needed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's really something else. And then the mm-hmm. other thing is that you have a master's in sustainable design. Do do. do you... Is that something that's part of every project or it's available to you when a particular builder or developer finds it to be uh, a value and importance? Like, how does that fit into your, your mix? No, we always try to integrate it into every project that we can. Obviously, there's some some pricing parameters that we have to um, work within. But, you know, our philosophy is, is we're going to deliver the best design possible within, you know, the best sustainable principles or the best wellness pr- principles that we can, whatever that means. And however that fits into the project, because each project is different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
it's 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 really my head spinning <laughs> <laughs> it's fun isn't it <laughs> it is it's it's like i you know you should have this thing where people could just come and be at your office for three days <laughs> you know i would just like love to just sit in your lobby and just watch all of you women coming and going and listening to the phone conversations and all of that stuff it just is such an exciting environment and you really you would love it yeah and it really comes through on your website i have to say you do a great job conveying the energy, the synergy, um, the camaraderie, and the level of quality and professionalism on your website. It's pretty oh, in, you. yeah, you, you, it, it, it does. It's, um, I can imagine that it draws in a lot of people that potentially want to work with you and just like, oh yeah, let's go with these people. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, a lot of our clients become friends. So it's, uh, it's, it's, we're very blessed. Yeah. And you have quite a few awards. I saw the one video with it was what was it called color who's in Colorado tell me what that was called you were oh Colorado companies to watch so yes, we were named Colorado's one of the, companies yeah. to watch and I I watched the video and I understood that it went from a thousand entrants down to yes. 50 yes. and what I didn't understand was did you were did they recognize the 50 or were you the one out of the 50 then that's what I didn't pick up no, no, no. They recognized 50. Whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. It's a really special night. It was awesome. Yeah, that video was awesome. And so tell us a little bit about the criteria that you either either was established to meet that, to make that, um, earn that award, or that you feel earned you the award. I don't know how specific and laid out it was, you know, as far as from the committee standpoint for their selection process. Um, you know, we were nominated, um, and became a finalist. Um, it was a surprise, uh, obviously a pleasant surprise. Um, but the criteria was obviously based on, uh, revenue for mm -hmm. one, uh, how you give back to the community for two. And I think, uh, maybe overall work environment or something. I'm, I know there was three strong areas. Okay. Okay. How you give it. And, and so that surprises me that you were nominated by someone else. I mean, it would not have been, been any less of an achievement if, you know, Carrie said, I heard about this. Let's put our name in the hat. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? So right. that's pretty remarkable in itself that somebody else outside uh, thought that you should be nominated. So that's pretty cool. It was pretty special. Okay. All right. So what can we take apart a little bit? I, I know that this is probably entirely too complicated to really get a grasp on it, but when, just a little for understanding, when you become at a level where you have established some, some chops and you've maybe a designer has spent a couple of projects doing at a, their local level with their local builders, like you described, and they've spent some time cultivating a network within these builder associations and they're ready to put their, their thing in a, their, their hat in the ring here. Is it something that you bid on in order like a developer? I'm sure now you get invited in. It doesn't, wouldn't surprise me if you said that, but in the beginning, are you bidding on the projects against other interior design firms? Is that how the process starts, Angela? Absolutely. Okay. So generally they'll send out an RFP um, and they'll send it to three to five different design firms and you go in and you, you pitch your design ideas and, and your firm and away you go. The great thing about it is, is once you get in and you're able to deliver on your promise and you're successful, a lot of times, you know, th those builders and developers are, are, are loyal and they'll come back. And so that's a great question. Is it a process that because I mean, if, if it's a developer is a developer and he owns the project and the, and the land and the property and everything else, he's not required to bid it. If he really is, you know, three times you've earned the bid and three times he's, he or she has loved your work, he can now just or she can now just as the developer hire you and say, you're my firm now, right? In most instances. Yeah. Okay. So, but a lot and of some, times it's a conglomeration of owners and partners and they have to justify the bid process, you think? That's right. And a, and a lot of times you'll be working with the local uh, division president or the local team and they have a national team, if they're a national builder or a national developer, that require that, you know, you have at least three to five answers to an RFP. Okay. What does RFP stand for? Don't mind my ignorance. Oh, request for proposal. Oh, okay. Very simple. <laughs> 
<laughs> not this big co- complicated term, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's not. Okay. And what's so funny is, um, I guess for us in window treatments, it's RIB. I should have thought of it. RFB, right. it's request for bid. Like, hello, Louie, wake up, smell the coffee. <laughs> okay. All righty. So, okay. So now that brings another question to my mind. You're talking about, you're at the point where you're working with developers that are at national level. And so they have the state level offices and so forth. Are there, I mean, I feel like I know that there's builders here in New Jersey that are, they might be doing projects on a national level. No. Okay. So like, uh, like, like, I guess their projects are restricted to New York Metro and maybe as far as Boston, but they don't have multiple offices. They operate at, I'm thinking of one particular builder here, operates out of one home office and Mm -hmm. the satellite offices are really just sales offices for the properties that like the home office is there. So is there two different levels of developers, a mom and pop shop that might be a multi-million dollar company, but then the national, you know, developer level that could be a multi-billion dollar company. Is that how this is sort of breaks out? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're going to have your nationally public traded builders, you know, okay. that have uh, they have full teams set up in, in different states Okay. and they have multiple communities. So it might be easier to get in with even if it is a big builder and that maybe they are, a, a you know, several, several million dollar company or billion for all I know. I don't know what the heck these things are, but homegrown like a, it's a big guy a huge guy in your state where you can really develop a relationship with that one and not worry about that the national team is taking bids from 16 different offices across the country absolutely okay. I, I mean there's yeah we love our local builders okay okay because they're I, in our own backyard and we understand the communities Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I guess what I was the disconnect for me was when I think local builder, I think, you know, a, a guy with a team of 10 and he builds, you know, uh, attractive houses every two years. He buys a street, he buys, te- puts 10 houses up. But there are the word local builder would also a t- a, apply to a, a several, like I said, a, like a big company that maybe has assets of. Mm-hmm. Five, six, seven, eight thousand properties, but that's still considered a local builder because they're not building nationally. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. All righty. Well, I have to tell you, you know, I said it multiple times, but you really impressed the heck out of me. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's really something. It's exciting to talk to somebody that has so much going on and is so clearly skilled at both sides of their business. That that always excites me and makes me really respect what you do. And the, the women that work for you are adorable and talented. It's so apparent. <laughs> well, and we have one man. So oh, we don't that's right. I'm either. sorry. You do. You have, is it Jonathan? <laughs> Jonathan. Yes, 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 yes. yes He's yes. a fantastic designer. That's right. That's funny. That's a little funny thing in there. How does Jonathan stand it with all you ladies? <laughs> uh, he holds his own. <laughs> 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 that's so funny i don't know yeah. do you know mark mcdonough from tastefully inspired i don't No. okay so i'm just laughing because we just came back from atlanta from america's mark and we were about i don't know eight of us in a posse that we just traveled around together for three days and it was you know seven women and mark <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and it was and it that's was funny. fun it was fun because you know i mean he's just awesome but uh every time we, like really the waiters everywhere we went kept on making a remark on it and we multiple times we would be out and another guy that would be with his business buddies would come up and look at mark and go dude what do you, how did you do this <laughs> <laughs> that's so, funny it was fun we had a good time so anyway well angela i really do thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us and and being so you know forthright in you know how you built this and what it takes to do it and um i think it's pretty interesting you do speak around the country are i do i understand you're going to high point this year in fall am i did i yeah. see that yeah, we'll be at High Point. We have two Instagram takeovers, so feel free to follow us. Okay. I have no idea if I can turn this show around before High Point or not, but if I can, I will. And if okay. not, you know, everybody that's listening, hopefully you had seen Angela in High Point even before you might have heard of her on the show. So, right. well, thanks so much, Angela, for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much.
So if that wasn't enough inspiration for you, you must visit Angela's website at www.trioenvironments.com. I'm serious. She really presents her company as well digitally as she did here on the podcast. And what really impressed me was when I visited the site, how clearly she's able to convey both how highly capable and professional her firm and her team are, but it also comes across how real and down to earth they are. There's no airs. It, it's just, um, I, I have to tell you, there's just this complete harmony between we have our stuff locked down, but we have a great time and it's not going to be a pain to work with us. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Um, so I, I think you, you do yourself a favor and you, I, I believe me, I, I'm sure you will enjoy looking at her website. The videos and the projects they do are just really something else. The videos are infectious, really. I mean, remind me, I told you, remind me of Pulp, St- Pulp Studio when I wanted to keep watching them, right? All right. So here are my takeaways from this show. Number one is how prepared you have to be to swim in this pond, right? Um, This is not a lot of times I have to say, I suggest that you act as if until you really have it locked down. But I would say, uh uh-uh, not here. Okay. Um, The answer though is you could start local the way Angela suggested with a small builder or developer in your area. And you could build your relationship, build your skills in this type of design and develop your systems for executing these kinds of projects. Because like Angela said, the timelines are different, the requirements are different. And so you don't go into the big pond and act as if here, like she said, you don't want to be at that table and be the only one who doesn't know what they're talking about. But she was very encouraging. And I hope you heard it, that it, you're perfectly able to start at the much smaller level and really learn the ropes. And it's exactly what she did. Okay. Um, and then I'll just say, if you are experienced and you are in a place where you can earn some projects with local developers, the second takeaway is... If you're feeling a little burnt out by the residential, you know, let's be real. We all know that feeling at some point in our lives. Um, then maybe this is a path that you could think about moving your firm in, the direction. So you have to start, um, like she said, going to the Builders Association meetings and starting to meet people and uh, starting your network and, you know, putting your hat in the ring to get involved in some of these projects. So I really love that she, I think, had the right mix of cautioning you how serious a field that this part of the design world is and how high the stakes are. But I felt that she was very encouraging that it's completely doable if it's your goal and your desire to do so. All right. So this show is airing during the High Point Fall Market 2017. If you're there, Angela is there. While we were talking, I wasn't sure when the show would go up, but I'm up. It's here while you're there. So for all of my besties at High Point, I wish you safe travels to and from the market. I hope you find fabulous treasures for all of your clients. And I, of course, I hope you enjoy all of the parties. (laughs) I have a feeling I don't have to hope too hard for that. Anyway, I'm not really that worried on that account. Tag me in your pics. I would love to see you guys having a great time. And please be sure to look for Angela and say hello and tell her that you heard her on the podcast and let her know that I said hello as well. A reminder to follow me on Facebook at A Well-Designed Business because today, again, the day the show airs, 2017, October 16, 2017, at 1 o'clock, Marina Umali will be at Window Works for a Lunch and Learn, and she's going to be doing a seminar on feng shui. Way, and she's going to be sharing five tips that you can use now to invite success into both your personal and your professional life. So if you have, if it's before one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time here on this particular day, then tune in over there at Facebook, A Well-Designed Business. And if it's after that, the replay will be there. Don't worry about it. And within a couple of days, I'll put it up to the YouTube site for A Well-Designed Business. All righty. So um, thank you so much for listening. And if you're one of those, that's going to reach out and do an iTunes review for my birthday present. I would totally love it. And I will thank you in advance for that. And I hope you guys have an excellent day. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. 
All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events. 